There is no excuse for that failure. Saints of God, what is the remedy? The remedy is we need to begin to speak and you must speak. Jesus spoke to the waters. He spoke to the fig tree. Speak to that situation and it will hear you. Angels will mobilize. God is mobilized when you speak. But I know that God will not direct your paths into destruction. God will not direct your paths into poverty. God will not direct your paths into sickness. God will direct your paths into victory. God will direct your paths into success. God will direct your paths into blessing. And I declare to you today in the name of Jesus that the next footsteps you're about to take will be directed by God. You're about to walk into your miracle, child of God. I call this extraordinary perception. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to be influential, if you're going to have an audience with the great, you're going to have to see what others don't see. So let me give that to you again. Successful people see what others don't see. Hi, this is Tim Grage and welcome to another episode of Phronesis. Today I want to talk to you about something I have titled, All Power is Yours. Did you get that? All Power is Yours. Luke chapter 9 verse 1, let's start from there. Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he was about to send them out two by two. Remember that time when he released them into the cities? In verse 1 he says, then he called his 12 disciples together, listen to this, and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. One translation actually says, and to cure all diseases. Notice two things there. He gave them power and authority. They are not the same. The Greek word for power there is dunamis. Dunamis means that which is dynamic in its working. It is a force that is dynamic in its working, like what you will call dynamite, something that can explode, all right? And then in authority, the Greek word there is exousia. The only way I can explain exousia is a rank. Maybe if I give you an illustration, you will understand the difference. It's like when you have a police officer. When the police officer is wearing his his uniform and he has a rank that is authority do you notice then that even if the police officer is standing on the street and he tells you to stop your vehicle even though he doesn't have a gun because of the garment he is wearing because of the authority that he represents you will stop your car now of course he is also very often given a weapon so that peradventure you refuse to stop your car or you are someone that he needs to stop by force. He is given a weapon that he can use to forcibly command you to respond. What is that weapon? In this case, that will be power or dunamis. Do you get the difference? Now, when you understand this, you will then realize that it is possible to have power without authority but you cannot have true authority without power it means that you could be you could have a gun but not be given the authority or the right to use it but if you are given the authority then you must also have been given the power to use that authority so jesus said i have not just given you power i have also given you the authority to use it oh my goodness we need to we need to appreciate what i'm about to explain this is why why man that is born again has actually been placed higher than the angels. Did you get that? Man has actually been placed higher than the angels of God. When I say man, I'm talking about the born again believer. Did you notice that speaking about the angels, the Bible says in Psalm 103 verse 20 that the angels hearken to the voice of of God. They respond. If, if they're going to do any bidding, they respond to the voice of God. Then 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 11 says that between you and I, if you are a believer watching this, that you are the oracle of God. The word oracle there means the mouthpiece of God. It means when you speak, you are speaking the word of God. And if angels respond to the word of God, when you speak, you mobilize angels to respond 
to you because the believer has actually been placed in rank higher than the angels. See, angels could have greater power than we do because they are spiritual beings. They are not bogged down with the limitations of mortality. But in spite of their power, because of our rank in the spirit, what is our rank in the spirit? Have you not seen where the Bible says that we have been made to sit together with Christ in the heavenlies? We are seated, not that... It wasn't that the Lord created a space somewhere next to himself. No, he did more than that. He moved on his seat. We are seated on his own throne. The throne of the king is our throne. Saints, that is a mind-boggling statement. It means Jesus shifted on his seat and created space for you. This is why our authority is unprecedented. Matthew 28, Jesus was speaking in verse 18. He said, all power has been given to me. The word power there is actually exousia. He's saying all authority has been given to me. And then he says in verse 19, go ye. In context, he is saying that because all authority has been given to me, I have given you that authority. Saints of God, you have all authority power. All of God's authority has been made available to you. It means there is no excuse for the enemy to be able to overwhelm a child of God. Let me show you something. Let's see if we can find it quickly. In John chapter 3, go there with me if you do not mind. In John chapter 3, I think the last time we were together on Phronesis, I shared this with you. Verse 31, it says, he that cometh from above is above all. No matter the opposition you are facing, be them natural or be them spiritual, he says you are above all. But now let me show you something extra. In verse 34 he says, For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure to him. Some people have said that this scripture was referring only to Jesus. At this time it was but not any longer. Now that we have been baptized into Christ, saints of God, now that we have been baptized into Christ, and don't take my word for it, that is Romans 6 verse 3, that is Galatians 3 verse 27, now that we have been baptized into Christ, saints, this scripture applies to us. It says, for he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, because he has not given to you the Holy Spirit by measure. Oh goodness. You have been given all power. You have been given all authority. There is no excuse for that failure. Saints of God, what is the remedy? The remedy is we need to begin to speak. And that's why I'm going to pause and park my bench. You need to speak. The work of a spirit, the work of God is in speaking. When we work in the natural, we use our hands and whatever else the natural realm requires for us to do our work. But when you are going to work as a God, the work of God's is in speaking. When God was going to create the earth, the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 tells us he spoke. So later the Bible says in, uh, that the Lord has now rested from his work. What was his work? His work was speaking. If you are going to change that situation, I don't know what you are facing. You must speak. He, he says in that John 3, 34, forget everything else, remember this. He whom God has sent speaketh the word of God. Again, I'm out of time. You must speak. Jesus spoke to the waters. He spoke to the fig tree. Speak to that situation and it will hear you. Angels will mobilize. God is mobilized when you speak. This has been Tim Grage, Senior Pastor of the City of Zion Santon. Catch you again on another episode of Phronesis. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to Phrenesis. This is Dr. Tich Tanyanyua, the founder of Success Paradigms 101. I want to talk to you about some very, very pertinent issues regarding your life, your personal success, and what God wants to achieve and accomplish through you. One of the most amazing things that I've discovered over the years as a coach, because I function as a pastor, yes, but also as a coach. I develop people, I coach and help people achieve success. And this is, after all, phrenesis, which means wisdom. 
the wisdom, practical wisdom that helps you to succeed in life. And that's what this whole program is about. We're here to help you go on a journey of success with all the ministers, the great men and women of God that come on this program. We are sharing practical things that you can do that will help you to succeed. So stay connected to Fronesis, follow us on YouTube and every other platform and you will be empowered. But I want to talk to you from one of the books that I wrote and the book is called there we go. Destined for greatness. Greatness is inherent gift in every single one of us as the children of God. We are children of a great God and he said he made us after his image and likeness. That means there is greatness in you. But the question is how many of us ever get to achieve the greatness that God has placed on the inside of us? How many of us ever get to live a life of significance, influence, impact and success according to God's plan for your life? As a coach, as a pastor, I've discovered that too few people ever achieve the great potential that is hidden in them. Hence, I wrote this book, Destined for Greatness. It is loaded with wisdom principles, and I want to come up with a few excerpts that I believe will bless you. So let's get into our lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, teach us, guide us, instruct us in your word, and help us to achieve success in Jesus' name. Amen. You are born to be great. I want to build on two foundational scriptures. The first one is Proverbs 18, verse 16, and it reads, A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before before the great or before great men. You have a gift. You have a gift that is on the inside of you and that gift is designed to make room for you, to open doors for you. And remember, we're quoting from the book of wisdom here and it's really, really powerful. The second scripture that we're building on is Proverbs 22 verse 29 and it reads, do you see a man who is prompt in his work? The King James says, who is diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before obscure men. That's very simple, very direct. God is telling you, if you are diligent in your gift, if you are diligent in both discovering, making use of training and developing and enhancing your gift, you will not stand before obscure men. So you know right now, by virtue of the audience that you currently have, whether or not you have been diligent in making use of your gift. I remember a few years ago, before I discovered the giftings that were in me, I was just a pastor loving what I do. I love pastoring. I love preaching the word. I love to share the word of God. But I had not fully discovered the gifts that were in me. I didn't know I was an author. I didn't know I was a businessman, entrepreneur. I didn't know I was a coach. I didn't know I was a filmmaker. I didn't know I was able to coach and develop people. As I began to discover my gifts and I became so diligent at them, doors began to open. I began to have have audiences with greater and greater people. Right now I'm coaching very influential people in ANC and in ZANU-PF, in different political parties. I'm coaching top executives that are running multi-million uh, rand and million dollar corporations. I'm coaching people that are becoming very, very successful. That would not have happened had I not discovered the gifts that were in me. Do you see a man who is prompt in his work, who is diligent in his work? Your signature will be seen in everything that you do and that qualifies you for the audience that you will begin to have have. So let me give you a couple of principles over the next few weeks. I want to give you principles and build my case progressively and help you to position yourself for greatness. This is what I've done. This is what I've coached many people to do. And many people have become successful because of these principles. Principle number one is successful people see what others don't see. I call this extraordinary perception. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to be influential, if you're going to have an audience with the great, you're going to have to see what others don't see. So let me give that to you again. Successful people see what others don't see. That is perception. What is your perception like? What do you see? Are you seeing opportunity in crisis? Are you seeing open doors when others are seeing closed doors? Are you seeing death when others are seeing life? You need to develop the ability to see what others don't see. All successful people see what others don't see. Principle number two. 
Successful people speak what others don't speak. They have an extraordinary vocabulary. So number one, we said extraordinary perception. Number two, extraordinary vocabulary. Have you reduced your life to a vocabulary of failure, limitation, and frustration? The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So we know what is inside of you by virtue of your language, what you're saying, what you're speaking on a continual or consistent basis. So here's my challenge to you. Begin to look at your ability to perceive, to see, and your ability to speak. Work on it. Develop a whole new vocabulary. How do you do that? Read great books. <laughs> if you read my books, your, your mindset will definitely change and the way you think about yourself, the way you think about life will begin to shift and you'll begin to see the greatness that is on the inside of you. In fact, our business is called Success Paradigms 101. The reason we called it that is because after a while of working with people, I began to realize that people's greatest enemy is their paradigm, their perception. How do you view yourself and how do you view the world? World around you. Your paradigms are the number one blockage for your success and your significance. So if you begin to put on what we call the success paradigm, you begin to see your life change, the quality of life change, the quality of your relationships changing, the quality of your career, your tra the trajectory of your career will begin to change based on your paradigms, based on your perceptions, based on your vocabulary. Success is an achievable goal. All you have to do is work on yourself. And one of the key factors also to doing that is listening to Phronesis, a great program designed with the intent of equipping you for personal success, giving you wisdom nuggets that will empower you to live a significant life. So I want to encourage you, keep connected, stay connected. All the great men and women that come on this program are loaded with wisdom that will help you achieve great success. So I want to encourage you today, make a quality decision. I'm going to work on my perception. I'm going to work on my vocabulary. And that's going to change the trajectory of my life. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Dr. Titch Tanya Nyua. Always excited to share wisdom with you and empower you for your next level. So let's go on the journey together. You are destined for greatness. God bless you. Praise the Lord God Almighty, His mercies are new every morning. What a privilege it is to be able to sit at the King's table and eat His word in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ said that my word is bread. And I declare to you today that you are going to receive your fill of God's word so you can be able to do that thing which God has called you to do. I want to speak to you today about God's available power. God's available power. You know, there's a story that I remember that is quite uh, engraved in my mind, and that's the story of Moses. You know, Moses, if you remember that story very well, he was surrounded by Pharaoh's army from behind, and in front of him stood the Red Sea. So it seemed almost impossible, as many situations in the Bible have been portrayed, until God steps in. So your situation may seem impossible until God steps in. And as Moses asked God, he says, how are we going to go through this situation? Because the people were beginning to mummer, and God said something very profound to me. He said, why are you looking to me. I have already empowered you. Lift up the rod in your hand and you will see me perform miracles. I almost feel like God is saying the same thing to you today. Lift up your hands, worship me, praise me, declare my goodness in your situation, declare my praise in the midst of chaos and confusion. It confounds the devil how we are still able to say praise the Lord Jesus in the midst of situations that we have no, no control over and that is what what makes us believers. What makes us believers is trusting in the one who is above, the one who sits on the throne, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who was, who is, and is to come, the God before Genesis and the God who will exist long after the book of Revelation. Let's get into the word today. It says that trust in the Lord, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. I want you to take note of that. We're going to come back to that one in just a few minutes. It says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Let's look at that one again. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
not some of your heart. In other words, that spirit man, that born again man, that inside part of you, that one is the one God is asking for. God says, don't give me competition there because don't fill that place with worry or with envy or with jealousy or with unforgiveness. He says, that one is the one I want. This is why the other proverb says, guard your heart with all diligence for from it flow the issues of life. What is that trying to say to you? That's trying to say to you that everything that God is ever going to do, he's going to start it within you. God works from the inside out, not from the outside in. That's why we don't depend on physical results. That's why we can re reverse doctor's diagnosis. That's why we can speak against situations that are saying to us, you can't afford that, or you don't have enough resources to do that because we live from the inside out. That's why the scripture is declaring, it says, lean not on your own understanding. Man, I don't know about you, but often I've had to go to God and repent and say, God, I have thought I would be able to solve this problem on my own. I thought that I would be able to build those connections on my own. I thought that my charisma, my charm, my ability to woo people would be able to get me through that door. I thought that my degree or my education or some skill or talent I had would be able to move me forward. Lord, I repent because my my gift comes from you and it's that gift that you maximize that makes room for me and maybe you're in that situation right now and you've tried everything you thought that you had naturally it's time to tap into the supernatural it's time to tap into the things of God it's time to step in into what this word says and lean not on your own understanding it's time to go to God and say God I can't do this on my own God, I can't raise these children on my own. God, when they are in their school transport, the only way I know that they won't crash and die is because you protect them. I can't keep my eyes on them all the time, Lord. I can't do this. And that is when God begins to step in and says, okay, I see you're trusting me with all of your heart. You're acknowledging me with your children, acknowledging me with your career, acknowledging me in your marriage, acknowledging me in your finances, acknowledging me in your church service. And that's when God steps in. And I like this part, he says, he shall direct your paths. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that God will not direct your paths into destruction. God will not direct your paths into poverty. God will not direct your paths into sickness. God will direct your paths into victory. God will direct your paths into success. God will direct your paths into blessing. And I declare to you today in the name of Jesus that the next footsteps you're about to take will be directed by God. You're about to walk into your miracle, child of God. You're about to walk into your breakthrough. You're about to walk into your miracle. And I know that God is going to do what God does best. And that is to provide solutions to problems that seem impossible. You know, there's one thing I know about God is when you become a part of his system, a part of the kingdom, a part of his, a part of his plan, the realm of impossibility no longer applies to you because the word says that all things are possible to them that believe. And I believe I'm speaking to believers today, here today, and you're saying to me, Pastor, I agree with you. That word for me is yes and amen. That situation that seemed impossible, that report of the doctor that seemed impossible, that thing that has been harassed me for so long that seemed impossible. That situation that I could not get out of because it seemed impossible. This disciplinary hearing at work or this, that, whatever name you can give it, that must shift to the possibilities of God. That must shift to the miracles of God. Listen to me. You don't need God unless you need God. Does that make sense? That is why God will permit you to get into situations that you can't get out of because only he can take you out of those situations. Only he can call a barren woman fruitful. Glory be to God. Only he can call a wilderness a fruitful place in the name of Jesus Christ. Only he can call an empty bank account overflowing for every good work available. Only he can do that. And I'm encouraging you, child of God, get back into the systems of God. Get back into the trusting of God. Get back into the word of God. Maybe your prayer life has gone down. It's time to revive it. Maybe God is calling you to turn a few meals away and just fast and hear from man. I encourage you, go for it. Maybe God is asking you to go and repent to your pastors or your church you just left. Just do what God is telling you to do because God has success on his mind for you. God has a prosperity on his mind for you. And I declare that to become a manifested reality in your 
your life in the name of Jesus Christ. This is me, Dr. Abraham S. Raja, enjoying myself again as I listen and to myself speaking the word. My faith is rising in Jesus' name. I always say, if I don't preach for you, I'll preach for me in Jesus' name. I want you to connect with us. And I want you to find out what free offers we have for you. And I want you to know that God is on your side. And if the kingdom of God is in you, then everything around you will fail in comparison to the power available to you. Signing out, reminding you that the kingdom of God is in you. Purpose is not necessarily what you do, but who you are. This was one of the most awakening moments of my life. Do you know what your purpose is? Now there's a scripture in the book of John where the Pharisees come and ask John, who do you say you are? Guess how he responded to that question. I am the voice of the one calling in the streets. Make the path straight for the Lord. He answered an identity question through purpose. Who are you? Who are you to the world? What do you have to offer the world? Discovering your purpose is a meaningful and fulfilling journey. Go ahead and find out. Hello everyone, my name is Cherise, I come from Pretoria. My name is Ruta Jai, I'm from Nigeria. My name is Satara Khan, I'm from Port Elizabeth. My name is Pastor Mashan Mpatel, my wife and I are pastoring a church in Midor in South Africa. I'm a second year student at KBSM. KBSM has truly transformed our spiritual life and our marriage life as well. The Bible School has really helped me a lot. I'd like to welcome you and encourage you to take the step to come and enroll with Kingdom Bible School of Ministry. Come and we encourage you today to sign up. We encourage you to join this Bible school. And please remember, it's free. Dr. Abraham S. Raja here. You've heard it all from so many different people. What are you waiting for? Join our free international Bible school today. Viewer, I want you to know that salvation is a free gift. It doesn't matter how bad you have been. You may say, well, I was into drugs. I was in the occult, I've done all sorts of things. Man of God, you don't know what I've gone through. Jesus covers everything. He loves even the worst sinner. So today you can say, Lord, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now pray this prayer with me. Say, thank you, Jesus, for setting me free and washing all my sins away. Today, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior because I believe you died for me and took away every sin and you are reason for my salvation. Lord, I surrender all. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for setting me free from every sin, washing me clean and making me a child of God. Thank you, Father. Amen.